Whether diplomatic or mathematic, any problem can be solved by violence. This was best proven when we defeated the Dodo Menace, driving those monsters to extinction. But Dodo aren't the only animal humans have declared as the enemy. In 1932, the Australian government went to war with a group of 20,000 emus. After eight days of conflict, Australia cancelled the operation. The emus were victorious in their first, and for our sake, hopefully last war. This really happened, and today it's generally seen as the strangest war of all time. But there are many more unusual wars from history, some of which against other species of animal. Although less known today, they are just as ridiculous as the Emu War. As mentioned before, emus are not the only species to make war with humans. For centuries, the small nation of Ecuador has been terrorized by the most dangerous animal of all, goats. Part of Ecuador is Galapagos, a group of islands known for having a number of unique species. It was here Charles Darwin once studied natural selection, but by the 1990s, the same species he studied were now under threat of going extinct. 250,000 goats called the island home, and as a recent introduction, they were devastating the natural environment. Eventually, the Ecuadorian government decided to destroy the goats. Trained sharpshooters were sent in on helicopters and told to kill every single goat. In one year, 90% of them were dead. But there was a problem. The remaining 10% were intelligent. They had learned that the sound of nearby helicopters was an omen of death and started hiding from it. This prolonged the war for years. So the military captured one goat alive, implanted a tracking device and released it again. After, they simply followed the goat until she led them to other populations and killed all they could find. This tactic proved successful, and before long, Ecuador was able to declare victory. At long last, humanity had redeemed itself. In the mid-19th century, there was a lot of confusion over where the border between the US and British Columbia was. No official agreement stated the border, so it was up for debate and no one knew. As a result, you had American and British society overlapping in some areas. One of such areas was the San Juan Islands, claimed by both sides. In 1859, an American farmer living on the islands found a seemingly wild pig eating his crops, so he shot it dead. Turns out the pig was owned by a British citizen, who demanded $100 in compensation. The American protested, apparently saying, It was eating my potatoes. The Brit replied, It is up to you to keep your potatoes out of my pig. Where I'm from, those are fighting words. And apparently they agreed as the situation soon evolved into a war. When British authorities tried to arrest the farmer, American soldiers came to the islands to defend him. The British sent free warships and soldiers of their own too. A state of war had now descended on them. Luckily, it was a bloodless war, as neither side was willing to kill or die over a pig. Yet still, it took several months for the pig war to be resolved. In 1731, a merchant ship leaving the Caribbean was boarded by Spanish authorities, suspecting smugglers were on board. The ship's captain, Robert Jenkins, was tied to the mast and had his left ear cut off. But he was no smuggler, and soon returned to England. Jenkins assumed the British government would find his story irresistible, but they didn't seem to care. However, the situation seven years later was very different. For various reasons, many in Britain were now itching for an excuse to declare war on Spain. Suddenly, his irregular story had value. Jenkins was invited to address Parliament and tell members all about how he lost his ear. It was the excuse they had been waiting for, and in 1739, Britain went to war with Spain. After nine years of conflict, hundreds of ships destroyed, and thousands of lives lost, it went down in history as the War of Jenkins' Ear. So why would Robert Jenkins want all of this over the loss of his ear? Well, he and his ear had been very close. In fact, you could say he was attached to it. That was a magnificent joke. Two centuries ago, Austria went to war with itself, sort of. At the time, Austria was already at war with the Ottomans, two great empires wrestling for each other's land. One night, an Austrian scouting party was sent to search for the enemy, but instead of Ottomans, they found a band of gypsies who sold them several barrels of alcohol. 
After a while, another group of Austrian soldiers came across the now wildly drunk scouts. Somehow, the two groups of Austrians began shooting at each other. In the confusion, the scouts fled back to the main Austrian camp. The other group followed after, with the shooting continuing the whole time. And then things got really bad. Officers at the camp thought they were an Ottoman force charging towards the camp and opened fire. Artillery rained down on them, and the entire camp now believed they were under attack. After a while of everyone shooting at themselves, the whole army was forced to retreat. According to some sources, Austria lost 10% of its military that night. Other sources suggest no one died. Either way, something very strange happened that night. In 1758, something very strange happened in the small town of Windham, Connecticut. Lack of records from the time leave its exact nature unknown, but it's remembered as the Battle of the Frogs. According to the story, it was a June night of that year. Everyone in the town was inside their homes sleeping peacefully, but they were suddenly awoken by a great sound coming from the distance. They heard a sea of thumping, roaring and screeching getting closer and closer. It immediately caused mass panic among locals. Some thought it was the start of Judgment Day, but most thought it was an approaching native army, which was possible considering this was during the French and Indian War, a conflict that saw both Britain and France employ native forces. Several locals grabbed guns and fired in the direction of the noise. Others fled to seek help. Only the next morning did they discover its cause. Just outside the town, hundreds of bullfrogs lay dead, as if two armies of frogs had gone to war with each other. When word of this frog war got out, the people of Windham became a national laughingstock, and although largely forgotten by the outside world, the story has become an important part of local identity. The town seal even still depicts a frog. In what is now Ghana once stood the Ashanti Empire, an independent kingdom known for resisting European rule, but the British eventually incorporated it into their empire. Frederick Hodson was appointed its governor, and he immediately made a huge mistake. The Ashanti people had this stool. It was their throne, sat on by the monarch. The golden stool was much more than a throne. It was the symbol of legitimacy. Whoever owned it could claim power. To the Ashanti people, the stool represented everything they took pride in. It was even on their flag. Well, one day, Hodson demanded they give the stool to him, so that as representative of Queen Victoria, he could occupy it. Clearly, he didn't understand the significance of a golden stool. When British forces came to hunt down the stool, they were attacked, and forced to flee to a nearby fort. From here, the rebellion grew, and a force of 12,000 Ashanti besieged the fort. The war only ended three months later when British reinforcements arrived. Although a British military victory, the Ashanti never lost the golden stool, so I guess they won. This one isn't exactly a war so much as a simulated invasion, but it's too interesting not to include. On a cold February day in 1942, the Canadian military disguised themselves as German soldiers and invaded the city of Winnipeg. They shut down churches, local newspapers and schools, and rounded up city officials for arrest. Swastikas were erected on public buildings and they even started to loot museums. Many locals had no idea this was just a military exercise, and thought German forces really had invaded Winnipeg. But when everything returned to normal the next day, they were probably fine with it. Probably. It was basically a publicity stunt to scare Canadians into buying war bonds. By the early 1900s, Greece and Bulgaria were both independent countries, but thanks to decades of border disputes, tensions were high between them, so their shared border was highly militarized. In 1925, a Greek soldier stationed at the border had a dog with him, who he loved very much. While on patrol one day, the dog ran across the border into Bulgaria without warning. On instinct, he ran after his dog into Bulgarian land where he was shot dead by Bulgarian guards. Soldiers on both sides began to exchange fire. The Greek officer intervened, attempting to get both forces to halt fire, but then the Bulgarians just shot him too. When the Greek government got word of this, they went mental. Greece invaded Bulgaria, seizing control of the border town Petrik. Part of Bulgaria was now being occupied by a foreign army, all thanks to a dog running across their border. Before long, the international community forced Greece to leave Bulgaria. Strangely, no one knows what happens to the dog. 
The UK and Iceland have gone to war three times since 1958, and every time it was over some fish. The waters around Iceland are rich in cod, long attracting British fishing boats. But in 1958, Iceland passed a law extending its exclusive fishing zone from 4 to 12 miles off its coast. But the thing is, no one's scared of Iceland. Not since medieval times when it was full of Vikings. So the British fishing boats just ignored Icelandic law and kept operating, causing the first of three wars. At one point, the British Navy was ramming Icelandic ships. Eventually, the matter was solved with diplomacy, but in following years, Iceland would extend the zone twice more, causing another war on each occasion. 14th century Italy was home to various city-states competing with each other for dominance. In 1325, two of these city-states went to war over a bucket. One day, soldiers from the city of Modena snuck into the city of Bologna, where they stole a bucket from the central well. The theft of this bucket was too much of an insult for the Bolognese to take, so they declared war. Determined to reclaim the bucket at all costs, Bologna raised an army of 32,000 to destroy the 7,000 soldiers of Modena, but somehow the outnumbered Modena force defeated them in battle, winning the war. The bucket was theirs to keep. It is said that bucket is still held in the Cathedral of Modena today. That is how 2,000 people died fighting over a bucket.